Hello everyone. For a lot of you, this will be the first time you've actually seen my face, so it's probably out of it for you. So you may have seen from the video that I did yesterday that I'm trying to do the February video challenge. A little bit anxious about the February daily vlog challenge or whatever you want to call it, because uh, I just don't know if I've got enough content. I'm pretty sure I do because I've got so much going on and that's what everybody always says to me. But a lot of the videos that you see are uh, ones that I've previously recorded, like that one I recorded just before I was getting sick, which I'll touch on in a moment why I get sick. I've got a, an Osmo mobile. I picked one of them up and so I'm getting used to trying to have it on selfie mode and remembering to look at the lens and not at the screen. There. Bob wants to see Digger, so here we go. There's Digger. Digger's a fluffy bum. Hey Digger. Digger. Oi, turn around. Come here. Hello. Come say hello everyone. Say hi. Say hi. Look here. Can you look here? No, you just want to sniff my face. Right, anyway, the reason why sometimes I get sick is um, after my mother was diagnosed with cancer, I got sick too. She had lung cancer and she passed away from it in uh, very late 2017. I got sick probably about five months after she was diagnosed. And basically it was like I had glandular fever or I think in America you guys call it mono. But that's what the symptoms were like because I've had glandular fever before when I was a teenager. So I felt exactly the same way. I went to the doctor and they felt my neck and they felt quite a big growth in it. I went for an ultrasound and I had a really big massive lump on my thyroid. In the October of 2017 they finally did the surgery and they said they probably should have done it a little bit earlier. So I've only got half a thyroid left. So sometimes it gets a bit hard because I get all those symptoms like I've got glandular fever again so that's what happened the other week I was just sleeping all the time and lethargic and felt real weak in the legs and that kind of thing and this coming month on the recommendation of my doctor I'm going to try and get out and do a lot more exercise because my weight isn't helping so after my mum died with the um, lung cancer which was directly caused by cigarette smoking I quit smoking through grieving for my mum and that, I probably turned into a bit of a comfort eater and probably ate too much. You know, the hand to mouth thing, so you just put something in your mouth instead. So I put on like 30 kgs as such, so I'm about 220 pounds at the moment. So I've got to get out and do walking every day as well. So I'm going to do walking Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, plus try and upload a video every day. My doctor wants me to work tw walk 20 kilometers. Um, so basically she's saying I don't need to change anything I'm eating, but walk 20 kilometers just to get my metabolism working and, or whatever. I don't know, that's what the doctor said. So that's what I'm gonna try and do. So she said, don't expect yourself to be able to do the 20 kilometers of a day to start with at your weight with the summer and the heat, so. We'll see how I go. And for a lot of you, this will be the first time you've actually seen my face, so it's probably out of it for you. But um, yeah, I tend to hide a little bit because I don't feel like myself because I weigh so much extra than what I ever have. I've got a lot of stuff I need to change in the fish room. I've got the axolotls tank that I want to redo. Um, I've bought some sand and stuff to redo that. I've also bought enough sand so I can redo some of the other tanks. But the axolotls are actually going to be moving over to the other tank, the one that's on top of the small stand that's closest to the doorway. Because those are lower so it would be easier to feed them because otherwise I'm always up on the chair trying to feed the axolotls and it's kind of hard when you're jumping because they're grabbing the worm and you're like ah, freaking out. But I've got to actually plant all of my plants that I'm trying to grow properly in the tanks because I'm sick of it how it is. So we've got that coming up. I've got a tankscape to do for the newts as well. Which I'm probably going to put a divider in the middle and have the Japanese newts on one side and then the um, fire bellies on the other side. So we've got that going on. I want to paint the backs of a lot of tanks. Wow, there's so many updates to do with the fish. I've even bought some new fish that you guys haven't seen because I haven't really been focusing on the fish. I've been, you know, every every video has pretty much been newts and I'm pretty sure all you fish tank people will get sick of it. So yeah, fish room. Axolotl is getting completely shifted into what is the guppy tank at the moment. What am I doing with the bottom tank? 
I think the bottom tank will go back to being the normal tank that it is, but I'm changing that out with sand and put, putting plants in it. Um, the tank that the axolotls are in at the moment on the main rack, that is going to be have uh, proper sand put in the bottom and plants put in there as well. Also got lights that don't quite fit the rack, that are a little bit too long, that are going to be going in the tops of those. So we've got that coming up. We've got updates to do on all the fish we've got. Got a whole lot of rearranging to do and crap like that. And, you know, just, it's February to get to know each other a little bit better or something, you know? So we've got all of that. So that's really cool. And Digger, why do you got to piss on everything? You're lucky you're fluffy. Anyway, come here Digger, come here. Come sit and come show everyone your lovely snuffle. I think that kind of covers it. Oh, what I didn't tell you is that the um, the lady that I bought the Chinese five belly newts off, I was having to talk to her about how um, they died. I've got another video that will come out that will show you the day before the second one died. We were having a discussion about it and she said it was probably actually the heat and the same thing happened to her when she got her first two notes. Live on the highway guys, I'm sorry. Sorry it's so noisy. So anyway, she said that she's been keeping hers semi-aquatic, even though the Fs and they're supposed to be terrestrial, giving them the option to be in the water and plenty of ways for them to get out has been working for her really well. And she's had heat left deaths out of her batches of eggs that she has and she hatches and all of that, you know. So she's had less deaths doing it that way. So she said to give that a go and see how I go. And she's gonna save some more for me out of the next batch that she's got coming up and I will replace the ones I've lost basically. So she reckons there was nothing wrong with my hus husbandry because I talked to her about it, showed her how I'd been keeping them, what, all, all of that going on. And you know, and she said the fact is, it may not have even been the heat. The funny thing about it is the heat when the two little Chinese fire bellies died was really mild compared to the heat wave that we just had. So Australia had a heat wave and they had like 45 degree heats come through. And then when, by the time we got up, we were in the high 30s. So definitely not good for a newt, but I managed to keep everyone alive. The three Chinese bellies that I had left, and then the um, fire bellies, and then um, four of my morphed Japanese newts. Although one of them morphed during the heat wave, but they were all alive and they were all fine. Um, so yeah, so that's what's going on with those guys. So I can't really show you an update for them. Oh, my legs went dead. Yeah, there's just still millions of Daphne are in here. And all the little fish are in here now. So that's pretty cool. And so they're just swimming around loving life. They've got like 400 odd litres of water in here. It's on a bit of an angle, so it doesn't even show the measurement right on here, but the water's that. Oh no, yeah, 400 litres. So I'm up to probably about 125 gallons of water. Seems I don't know conversions, but yeah. So these are the goldies in there, having a great time with all their Daphnia. So they won't be hungry. It's pretty cool. I just got to come out here because the duck we grows so quick, but it's good because you know it's pulling all the uh, ammonia, whatever. You know how it works. Anyway. So they grow real quick, so that's cool. Got these here that we're just testing out. So these are 200 litres. And we've had a little bit of dye off of the Daphnia that I put in. But yeah, we've still got liveies in there, so we'll see how they go. That one there, you can actually see some residue on the top and a lot of the deaths. So that one's obviously not clean enough yet. So I just throw a net full of Daphnia in and use it to test it. So, yeah, they still need some more rinsing. That one has had a corrosive in it, and this one had here has had glycerine in it, which you can see down there. So it's glycerine. So, yeah, that'll be about all for me today.